Hey, what's up guys? So we have a little bit of a how-to video for you here today. So uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, wonderful world of in-game sounds and out-of-the-park baseball. And uh, for that, of course, we're going to need something like this, right, so we can hear what's going on. And so um, I'll go ahead and uh, strap on uh, these earmuffs and uh, we can uh, figure out what we have uh what we have over here, we're going to look here at the screen view, and the first thing we're going to look at are the sounds that come included with the OTP, right? You may or may not be aware of this, but you can change pretty much any sound that comes with the game. Um, if you've played it before, you'll recognize some of the sounds that uh, come with this. I'm looking at a directory that has actually copies of the original sounds because I've already modified my original game. There's some sounds that some people like, some sounds some people might not like. There are some sounds I definitely don't like, though, and want to get rid of, like uh, this, for example. Let's go. All right, that's enough of that. If you've played OTP um, for any length of time with the sound on, you know about that sound. How long has sound been in this game? It's got to be going on like 20 years now, something like that. That sound is still there, the Gregorian chant of let's go, let's go, which is just awful. It's not very well conceived. It's not very well done. We need to get rid of it. We need to get rid of sounds that are like that. Personally, when I play the game, I don't like having any extra sounds. Some people like having the hot dog guy and the scorecard guy and stuff. I don't. I want to hear the ambience of the crowd. That's the thing that I want to hear the most. And so, I mean, there are different approaches you can take. You could go to like a game and have like, I don't know, a recorder and try to do stuff like that. You know, you could try to set up multiple recorders and microphones in the park. I wouldn't really recommend doing that unless you're going to see like Dead End Company or something like that. Um, what you probably want to do, though, is you probably want to look around for some sources that will give you some alternate audio. One of my favorite sources is uh, old uh, video copies of games. Now, I'm not going to show this to you because every time I do, uh, it ends up uh, ruining the encoding on the film. What we have here is a audio copy of Game 2 of the 1986 World Series. Um, and uh, the audio comes directly from the video broadcast. In other words, this is not the radio broadcast. This is going to be Vin Scully and Joe Garagiola. I'll play a little bit here so that you can hear. The temperature right here in New York is 57 degrees. The wind All right, there you have it. That's Vince Scully. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for anything that can add to the ambient audio or even sounds of like hits, sounds of catches and stuff like that. And you'll find as you look through it that you have quite a bit. Now, one of the things we want to do is as much as we love the sound of Vince Scully, we want to kind of avoid his voice. We also want to avoid having any of the organ voices from the uh, or noises from the ballpark. We kind of want to avoid having planes taking off and landing, though they did a good job of changing the LaGuardia schedule for this game and for all home games for that series, as many of you may recall. What we really want is we want that sound of the crowd. There's a reason why we're choosing this. It's not just because it's 86 and we're playing with the 86 Mets. The reason why I'm choosing this is because it's Vin Scully. Vin Scully happens to have a certain um, trait in uh, baseball broadcasts that other broadcasters don't have. It's called he shuts up. He won't talk over everything. It allows there to be at least some sort of sound audio in the background. As opposed to, I don't know, like Bob Costas, who would tend to talk a lot more. So we just sort of go through this. What we're looking for, of course, is we're looking for um, bits of audio that get rid of kind of like these bumps that go up and down, right? You see there's a whole bunch of them all over the place, but then you have time where there's no bumps. So if you listen to the bumps, it sounds like this. After Gedman, you have the sound of fielder Dave Henderson. Right? And we could start, I don't know, maybe like right here. Fastball. Right, and so right there, that's the unmistakable sound of the uh, bat hitting the ball. We want everything up until that. So right around here, right? It's uh, behind my head. There you go. And uh, what we get as a result is this. It's about a, uh, oh, 10 second or so audio file. Yeah. We're 
works perfectly, right? It works perfectly for a game. You can then export it. Now, when you export this audio, you have to be careful, right? This is the voice of wisdom telling you what to watch out for. You don't want to export it as an MP3. You don't want to export it in FLAC format. You don't want to do any, uh, what's it called, AAC or anything fancy like that. OTP, for reasons that are very mysterious to me, will only accept WAV files and uh, OGG files. That's it. And so what we want to do is we want to export it here in OGG format. The other thing we want to make sure is we want the quality up as high as it can be. We want it stereo. We want it the highest possible sampling rate. What we really want, though, is we want the current selection, not the whole project. Because you don't want ambient audio that has the entire broadcast of the entire game, right? You want just this little clip, this nice little clip of 10 or 11 seconds of the sound of Shea Stadium from a key game that you can then use in the background for when you're playing OTP, right? And that's the way that you get it. I'm not going to extract the audio here because I've done it quite a few times. There's other stuff that you can extract too, though, right? So like this, that's the sound of a bat, right? We look here back at the, um, uh, let's see, back at the uh, directory, you'll notice that there's all sorts of sounds that are similar to this, like this one, right? Or like this. It's the same file. All right, there's another one that's a little bit loud for normal hit. All right. It's also a little bit loud. That's probably a little more like it. So this is going to be a little bit more muted, right? If you really wanted to, you could like increase, you know, the amplification of the volume. You can do all sorts of tricks with it and stuff. Personally, I just sort of whatever. I don't worry too much about that. I don't worry too much about like exactly how crisp the bat sounds or whatever, you know, when I'm playing the game. I just want something that's going to be like the broadcast that uh, we have of the old World Series game, right? If you can take that, you can extract it. There's other things you can look for as well as you look for places where there's crowd noise. If you're lucky, you might be able to find something where the crowd starts to surge a little bit. You'll see things like, see this right here? Um, well, there's probably something going on. Let's listen. Do in the air, off the glove of Buckner. He is not going to have a play. Right, so if we take the audio then from right around here. There you go. You've got a loud cheer for about, what, 11, 12 seconds. Not bad, huh? And you can find all sorts of stuff like that, right? In fact, if you're really creative, um, when you talk about, like, anticipatory audio, you can find little, little examples of that here. Right? It's going to be really hard here because Vince Scully's voice is all over it. But if you search around through these games, you'll find from time to time that you do get that sort of swelling noise in the crowd, that swelling of excitement that you can use um, in your OTP game. Ball one. Right? Like right there. All right? Then you can hear that again, right? A little bit of the ground swell of the crowd, a little bit of it sort of coming up from a smaller sound to something bigger right there at the beginning. There's all sorts of stuff like this you can find in old games, right? And you can spend hours upon hours just looking for the right snip and the right type of audio and all this stuff, right? And it can help a lot with the game. It can help a lot with your immersion. It can help get rid of all of this really annoying audio that came standard. Another thing I will say, though, is whatever you do with it, make sure you have a backup of your copy of the audio. At least with Steam, one problem that happens is... Uh, when the uh, version of OTP updates automatically, it will override your audio. It will override everything that you've done, and it will delete the extraneous files and re-upload the original ones. So you've got to keep a backup somewhere of all of the stuff that you've worked on. It's unfortunate. It's kind of the way that it works with Steam. I like the fact that Steam will auto-update, but stuff like that sometimes kind of grinds my gears, if you uh, know what I'm saying. And there you go. That's uh, really simply uh, how you create your own audio for OTP. It's easy. These files can be found just about anywhere, especially on YouTube. There's all sorts of games you can use, right? Use your ears, right? Don't just download something and think this will work perfectly. Listen first and think about it and be discerning, right? Um, and you'll find that uh, it's actually not too hard to find stuff that will at least be passable and will should pass off uh, just perfectly fine in your game. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.